Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next section in calculus. We're now going to talk about the area under a curve. And this is a pretty important section. It's actually the fundamentals, the basics to a bigger topic in calculus, which is integrals, which you're going to be tested on. And so to give an overview of what's coming up before we get into these details here. So we're going to talk about the area under a curve first. So this is probably going to be split up into multiple videos. There's going to be a lot going on here. And then once we get through that, we'll talk about integrals, which is the next big topic in calculus. Now, I want to give a heads up that this section that we're on right now is going to be pretty tedious to get through. There's going to be a lot of detail, a lot of algebra going on. So just a heads up, it's going to be a bit of a drag to get through. It's going to be tough for me to get through as well to teach it. To be honest, I'm not too excited, not looking forward to, uh, to this section, to making the videos for this section, but we'll get through it anyway. But what's kind of nice is that once we get through this, once we get through those like tough details, then integrals are actually a lot smoother than this section. I'm not saying integrals are easier than this section, but the work for them is going to be smoother. If I was to compare this to maybe another more basic math topic is let's say we're finding the roots of a quadratic. Right here, this would be like using the quadratic formula, right? Just a lot of algebra a lot of details, a lot of sort of quote unquote manual labor, manual work. And then integrals, finding the roots of a quadratic, this is going to be more like factoring. And factoring can get complex. It could be really difficult. It could be easy to get stuck on questions with factoring. But I just feel like the work for factoring is a little bit more enjoyable than this sort of manual labor quote unquote work when you're using quadratic formulas. So that's how I kind of like to maybe compare these two topics. So just as a heads up, this next section is going to be uh, a lot to get through, a lot of details, but I'm going to try my best to explain it as best as possible. And let's jump straight into an example of how this all works. So basically here we got to find the area under the curve y equals x squared from an x value of 0 to an x value of 1. And what I'm going to do to start this off is I'm actually going to draw a diagram of this scenario. So y equals x squared, we know it's just a parabola, but we're going from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So the parabola would look something like that, really zoomed in here. And so let's say that at this point, if we draw a dotted line down, that's like an at an, that's at an x value of 1. And since we're dealing with y equals x squared, well, what's this y value going to be up here? Well, that y value is going to be 1. And so what we got to do is we actually have to find the area over here, all of this area. So if I draw out another one, basically this area here. So how are we going to find it? Well, what we're going to do is we're first going to go through a couple of steps of where we can approximate it. And then at the end, we'll figure out a method for finding the exact area that we want. And the way to approximate it is you can actually split this interval from 0 to 1 into separate subintervals. And so you could pick any number. Uh, let's pick uh, four intervals to start with. So. If we split this in half, we'll have one half over here, right? An x value of one half. This would be an x value of one over four. And then this here would be an x value of three over four. And so what we want to do now is we want to find out what's the area of these subintervals, and then we can add all of those areas. Question is, how do we get those areas? How can we approximate them? Well, one way is we can actually create rectangles here. And so what I'm going to do is that for each of these x values, I'm going to put a point that's on the curve y equals x squared. And then so at 3 over 4, it's here. And then at an x value of 1, we already have that point up there. 
And so what we can do here is we can draw some rectangles. So notice if I draw a rectangle like this, and then I could draw a rectangle like that, like that, and then like that. So if you notice, we got four different rectangles here. And so what we can do now is we can actually find the area of each of these four rectangles, and then we could sum up the areas, and that would give us an approximation for the area under the curve. It's not going to give us the exact area, but it's going to be an approximation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to create an expression for the sum of these rectangle areas. Right, and this expression that I'm going to go over, it's actually pretty important. It's going to keep coming up over the next couple of videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to find the area of this first rectangle over here. Right, what's the area of this rectangle going to be? Well, the area of a rectangle, we know it's the length times the width. Right? Maybe we could call this the height since we're looking at it on a graph. Right? So length times width or length times height. So what's the length of this first rectangle going to be? Well, notice it's from 0 to 1 over 4. So the length of this first rectangle is going to be 1 over 4. So let's maybe actually just put length of that first rectangle. There's going to be a lot going on here, so let's maybe keep track of what we're doing with words. So we got the 1 over 4 here. Now, here's where it starts to get a little bit weird. What is the width going to be or the height? Well, if we change this x squared, let's change it to f of x. Notice that the height or the width is just going to be the y value of this coordinate, right? It's going to be the height of this coordinate, right? Because that is a vertice on that rectangle right here. So the height of this is the same as the height of the rectangle. And so the height of this is going to be the y value of this point, which is just basically going to be the y value on this function x squared at an x value of 1 over 4. Okay, so what we can do here is we can actually represent this as f of 1 over 4. That's going to be the width of the first rectangle. Right, so one more time, the length is just 1 over 4, and in fact, the length of all of these rectangles is just going to be 1 over 4. But the width is going to change for all of them. The width of this one here is going to be the y value of this point, which is just basically f of 1 over 4. And the reason why I'm keeping it general here is because you're not always going to be working with x squared. You're working with x squared in this case, but this function can be anything. We're going to be working with a bunch of different functions, so I'm going to keep it general for now as a general expression, and then I'll get into more details with this x squared, right? But I just want you getting comfortable with realizing what's going on over here. Okay, so that is the area, right, length times width of the first rectangle right here. Now, what's the area of the second rectangle going to be? Well, it's going to be the length, which is 1 over 4. Let's keep it consistent here, square brackets. So this is going to be the length of that second rectangle. Now, what's the width of this second rectangle going to be? Well, notice the width is going to be all of this, or the height of it, which is basically going to be the y value of this coordinate over here, right? The y value of that coordinate is the same as the width of that second rectangle, which is going to be the y value on this function x squared at an x value of 1 over 2, right? So this here is going to be f of 1 over 2. Another way to think about it is Notice we got 1 over 4, so then this x value is going to be 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. 
So there's going to be two 1 over 4s. So 2 over 4 simplifies to 1 over 2, but another way to represent this is maybe f of 2 over 4. Like that. Right? So that's going to be the width of that second rectangle. And the reason why I'm going to put a 2 over 4 instead is because let's say this was five sub intervals. Then this would be one over five, then this would be two over five, three over five, because two over five doesn't simplify further, right? So when we start generalizing this, basically what we're gonna have is like one over a number, two over a number. So I'm gonna keep it in that format, even though the two over four does simplify to one over two. All right, so now moving on to the third rectangle, which is this over here. Now the length, the uh, length of it is still one over four. So this is the length of that third rectangle. What is the width going to be of it? What's the height going to be? Well, it's going to be f of three over four. Right, that's going to be the width of that third rectangle. So notice the pattern, right? We got one over four, two over four, three over four, right? That's why I kept it as that two over four, just so you could see the pattern clearly. And then this should keep going on here. I don't got room there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an expression here for the area of this fourth rectangle, which is gonna be one over four. That's the length of that fourth rectangle. And then what's the width of it going to be? What's the height of it going to be? It's going to be f of 1, right? It's just going to be 1 here. But to keep it in that same format, basically this is like f of 4 over 4, right? Which is like f of 1. All right, so this here represents the expression for the sum of these four rectangles, right? So pretty general, a little tedious, as I said, but why this is important is because the expressions that we're going to be going over in this video, in this example, and the next couple of examples are going to be in this format. And it's going to get more complex because this stuff can change because right now we're using four rectangles. So let me actually put some of four rectangles here. So that's why we have these fours everywhere. But what if we were using five rectangles? What if we were using 60 rectangles, right? Then everything here is going to change. And what if we were going from zero to two instead of zero to one, right? Then all of these values are still going to change. What if it was a different function that we're working with? Right, so things are going to change, they're going to get more complex. And so just realizing, understanding how these general expressions come about is very important. So I'm keeping it really general for now. Right, so now let's get into the specifics of this actual function, this x squared. So what's going to happen is we still got this 1 over 4. Now what's f of 1 over 4 going to be? Well, we would just plug in 1 over 4, this x value, into the function x squared. So this would be 1 over 4 to the power of 2, plus over here we're going to have 1 over 4. And then we would plug in 2 over 4 into the function for x. So we'd have 2 over 4 squared, plus 1 over 4, and then we'd plug in 3 over 4. That's going to be squared, plus... 1 over 4, and then we'd plug in 4 over 4, or just 1, into the function, and then that's going to be squared.